Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy, and today is episode 2 of Uncovering Range and Destiny. Now this episode is going to be about the effective range of pulse rifles and how they relate to the other weapons in the Crucible. But, before we get started, I ask you guys, the viewers, to look at this with fresh eyes. Leaving behind bias that you have for weapons that you're fond of, because I too use a variety of weapons, and of course there's a couple that I'm partial to. Because I'm a big fan of playing the game that we have, but you gotta call it as you see it sometimes. And I view this as a community discussion, it's something that we need to talk about. And I plan to show exactly what is going on here. Before custom games, I made a live gameplay commentary with the Hawksaw asking some hard questions, things like, are there any downsides to the pulse rifle? Are they too dominant? And like I said before then, I couldn't do any custom games. Now we can, so today's the day. The time is now. Let's get into it. I decided to cut back on a lot of the heavy stats in this episode. So we're going to go over some stats. They need to be there, but I, I got a lot of numbers. But we're just going to show exactly what is going on here so you can see it visually. And we have a couple numbers to round it all out. I went over the IS Luna in the last episode, and that's important because all of it is relevant. And I'll be bringing up the Palindrome in this review as well. We have four primary weapons in the Crucible. Assault Rifles, Hand Cannons, Pulse Rifles, and Scout Rifles. The ends of the spectrum, I get. The ends of the spectrum make sense, and they translate into game with what they're supposed to do. ARs are up close, scouts are from far. It's the in-between that doesn't make any sense, and what we're talking about are hand cannons and pulse rifles. So this is pretty much about how pulse rifles are treated differently. With this, scouts are going to be kind of left out of the testing because there aren't too many spots in the crucible where a scout will experience severe damage drop off, and if they do, it's minimal. But with saying that, they're consistent. The end of the spectrum, the far end scout, just like the close assault rifle. You know that a certain range, you're going to be doing max damage, you're going to step a little bit backwards, and it has fall off, it has fall off as you keep going back and back. It's consistent with that, with the range stat. And also a little bit about how the sight that you use plays into that, and that's more of an observation, that's more of a different video, but we're going to actually talk about the effective range with damage drop off. And first up is the assault rifles. We aren't going to dive too deep into them, that's not what this video is about, there's just something that needs to be shown, it's the basis of the video, so the exact AR doesn't matter, it's the trend of fall off with the assault rifle. I'm going to use the Righteous 7 from New Monarchy because I believe with the perks that it has from that last vendor roll, it's one of the most complete, better ones that you can get for this archetype with its high base range and stability. Now you generally have three options for the sights. We'll take a scout rifle, sometimes you get a range range and then a true sight, but most of the time you get a short sight, a medium sight, and then a long range sight. The zoom on those are short, medium, and long most of the time. The Righteous 7 does 20 to the head, and with a shorter range sight like the SPO 26 sight, the extended effective range is 25 meters. So. Inside 25 meters, you do 20 to the head. After you step back from that 25, that 20 turns to 19. And then from 25 to 31 meters, you do that 19 and so on. That's the important thing. As you step back, you do 19, then 18, then 17, things like that. The damage drop off is shown and it's consistent. At least when you're stepping back, you are landing your shots. Then we'll take the fast firing, the doctrine. It's 17 meters, which by the way, real talk, that's just literally a knee slide shotgun melee away, so whatever. But as you go back, the same thing happens, the same trend happens. It goes from 15 to 14 to 13 to 12, but you're able to land the shots with consistent fall off. So what you can take from that is the range stat on the assault rifle is if you add a little bit more range, it extends that furthest point of maximum effective range a little bit, but you still step back and you get some damage drop off. That's what you can take from that, and we're going to move on to hand cannons. Hand cannons are the ones that are in that gap, like I said, that just don't really make sense. First of all, they have the bloom. They have the accuracy issue that Bungie applied. Let's start with the poor Kumikatak right here. It's a fun little weapon. It's of the fast firing type. It does 77 to the head at 26 meters. That's the maximum distance. But once you step back, those accuracy issues come in. You actually miss your shots. And actually, inside 26 meters, you miss your shots too, even though that you're aiming at the head. And damage drop off is even more severe than the assault rifle. So you take a step back, that 77 turns to 74 to, you know, 70, 68, and it gets harder and harder to land your shots. And especially at that distance, you have things like flinch, right? If you're going against a grasp, if you're going against another hand cannon, not only are you fighting the damage drop off and the accuracy issues, but you're fighting the flinch going to even land the shot. 
Next, let's take the Palindrome Hand Cannon. I mean, you kind of need one like the Ice Lunar or the Palindrome to max out the stat bar at 62 with a reinforced or rifled barrel. And range is a necessity to make them actually at least function halfway decent. At 34, 34 and a half meters, that is the furthest it can do 86. And as you inch back, the damage drop off goes to 84, then 80. The drop off is severe. Again, just like I said with the Kumiko talk, once you start getting a little bit further past, not only are you experiencing drop off suddenly, but you're fighting things like bloom and accuracy and flinch. The range stat, again, like I said, is maxed out at 62. You need it. It is 100% needed. And if you take that away, it becomes very hard on you. Things start a little bit closer, things start actually missing shots a little bit more because of that range stat. That's how important it is on a hand cannon. So what you can take away from the hand cannon is that range is a necessity. With these two hand cannons, the Ice Lune and Palindrome, it maxes out the range stat at 62. That is important. You don't have that, it's not a good of a gun. And even at that maximum range that you do max damage, you step back, you have even worse issues with the accuracy and landing your shots and severe damage drop off. You actually see it in game. So take that visual and we're going to move on to the pulse rifle and that's where things get really interesting. Now we're just going to use a regular grasp with its regular range. It's got counterbalance. It's a good little gun. So the regular grasp is a fast firing flinch inducing machine that does 23 to the head. And this is a pulse rifle, the fast firing type. The highest distance it does max damage is 49 meters. And first off, 49 meters is no joke. I mean, think about your common maps. Think about your vertigos. Think about your asylums. Think about all these maps. 49 meters is pretty deep. But here's the kicker. At 49 meters, once you step back, it does 22 to the head, which is, you know, three less per burst. But it stays at 22 damage all the way up to 61 meters. That is 12 meters that it doesn't experience the fall off, right? So they talk about a sweet spot. How is it that every single gun in this game, once you, you know, get past that maximum threshold of max damage, you get increments very quickly of fall off, right? At least with the assault rifles, it's very crisp. You might be doing 17, 16 damage, but you can land the shots. With hand cannons, it may do 86, but when you step back, you're missing a lot more shots, and it goes from 86 to 84. You inch back just a little bit. For some reason, it's at 79, right? But with the pulse rifle, you can take back 12 meters at an already very strong effective range of 49, and it does nothing. And at that range, it's very crisp. It's not having accuracy issues. You can just aim at the body and four-burst somebody. And to add to that, 61 meters is deep, guys. I can't, like, you don't really even get into those engagements. It's an all-around just good distance. That distance, it's not suffering like the hand cannons with phantom bullets. On top of that, the range is 100% needed on the hand cannons, and you have consequences for not kind of investing into that range stat. So that grasp does 22 damage from 49 and a half meters or so up to 61. Now we're going to take the same exact grasp with the same exact sight, and we're going to add hand laid stock, which effectively takes away like a third of the range. Like, if you were to take that much range away with a big stability perk taking away range on a hand cannon or an assault rifle, it would effectively destroy it. But how come at 58 meters with the same grasp, I'm still doing 22 damage? It's unbelievable, and the pulse rifles just don't play by the same rules as the other weapons in the game. Now, you can compare that to a scout rifle, but again, if we're talking about the ends of the spectrum, the scout rifle has a lot of range. It's good from distance. You can be consistent with that. I'm fine with that. I'm good with the assault rifles at close range. They have damage drop off. They're good at close range, but as you step back, they lose that. I'm good with that. But in between, the hand cannons miss weird random bullets out of nowhere, and then you have a pulse rifle that is good at all ranges. It will take down an assault rifle at short range. It will take down a hand cannon at short range. It will take down a scout rifle at long range. It's There's no real downfall to it. I hope you guys see that. Let's jump up to the hopscotch archetype. I mean, we, we kind of go past the hawk saw, but it has the same parameters. That's where I'm getting with this. The hopscotch does 30 to the head. And even though, real quick, you can't really, you know, tell all what that range stat. It has more range than the grasp, but for some reason at 39 meters is the maximum distance it does 30 to the head. It falls off to 29, but it keeps the 29 up until 52 meters. That's 13 meters of keeping fall off. And that's why this archetype can compete. It's because the other ones, oh, and we're going to get to this. That's why the grasp and hawksaw 
still doing its 22 damage at 61 meters, 60 meters, outdoes these weapons. So we're going to keep on going. Here's something that I want to point out, and this is what I believe is happening. There are four archetypes of weapons, and Bungie is very big on blanketing nerfs, blanketing buffs, everything. An example of a blanket nerf is, hey, we nerfed fusion rifles, but now for some reason the Vex Mythic class is worthless. It's because it's classified as a fusion rifle. That's a blanket nerf. It's all or nothing, and that's where I think being very precise with these is going to help it out. But listen to this, I want to point something out, and it's the possibility of what I think is happening and why pulse rifles don't play by the same rules. This is something from that Bungie interview with uh, Crucible Radio. Every weapon archetype has a band of accuracy values that exist within a band of range values that all exist on a big script spreadsheet that they have control over. When you have a weapon range of, let's say, 40, you get this. We define the upper band and lower band and every step in the middle for each weapon archetype. So each weapon archetype has this big sheet of the stat and how it affects your weapon. The key word there is each weapon archetype. For me, if I understand this correctly, there are four weapon archetypes. And I want to throw another word out there. We're going to use the word variants. There are four weapon archetypes, but there are different variants within that archetype. As an example, the pulse rifle archetype has the fast firing variant of the grasp, the slow firing variant of the spare change in messenger. If I understand that correctly, that sounds like a blanket to me, to the archetype, and that makes perfect sense. Hear me out. That's the reason things like the Kumakatak don't get any love. That's the reason weapons like the Hopscotch can't compete with the Grasp and Hawksaw because it suffers the same exact damage parameters as far as distance fall off and the percentage that they put on it. Like fast firing hand cannons, they suffer the same exact accuracy fall off issues and cone issues as the palindrome, even though they're completely different. You have a pulse rifle like, let's say, the point. 8 second kill time of the grasp, fast firing, applies flinch, it does one less critical, 33 to 22, 12 meters down the road at 61 meters, we'll say 60, that's still, that's deep. The hopscotch has more range, even though not really, it starts fall off at 39 meters up to 51. Well, the grasp shoots faster, it kills faster, it applies more flinch, and on the average crucible map, that's the distance. They don't play by the same rules, that's what I'm trying to get across, and that's what I want you guys to see. I think it's unbelievable, and as a person that likes to review weapons and loves PvP, it makes me a human box of emotion. So here's the question to you, and again, this is a community discussion. Do you see what I see? And if not, please tell me why. Like, nobody in the comment section, and please be very, very respectful, and let's talk about this. You could be on the side of, no, I don't see the issue with that. That's fine, but please tell me why. Back it up. That's the point of all this. I don't necessarily know what needs to happen, but this is what I see. And again, I think that the variants within the archetype need to be individually precise to what's going on. It can't be blanketed all the way across because, again, you have a fast-firing weapon that, again, I can just mow somebody down to the body and kill them very quickly. Whereas if I get, get a little bit outside of the effective range of an assault rifle, I'm trying to make up for damage. If I get just a little bit outside the effective range for a hand cannon, I'm dealing with missed bullets and severe damage drop off you don't get that with the pulse rifle and that's what we're talking about i really appreciate it guys thank you for stopping by please discuss this in the comment section i really hope you enjoyed it and until the next one i am cool guy